What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here from Muscle Serpents Daily. And I promised you I'd be back on Tuesday. And I it is Tuesday, but technically it's Wednesday because it's super late. But I'm going into the snake room. I, I haven't decided if I'm going to show you something real exciting that's hatching in the, in the incubator. But I'm going to go check the other snakes. And I have an itching feeling that I might have a ball python that laid some eggs. So I didn't notice it this morning, but one was acting really, really like she was going to lay something. So huh, let's go check it out. And maybe if I feel kind-hearted and I want to give you guys a really nice surprise, I will show you uh, something very special. Another beautiful sight here in the snake room. Huge mound of eggs. This is my albino yellow belly that was bred by my Mardi Gras head albino. So repeating this breeding, trying to get some more albino Mardi Gras. We produced uh, some, I'll show you them in a little bit, last year. Um, in 2019, they were awesome. Um, I can't wait to see if we got more this year. And actually, hopefully by next season, breeding season, the actual albino Mardi Gras male that I produce will actually be breeding. And we can produce all albino Mardi Gras. So that would be really cool. So we're gonna have to pull this girl, obviously. And she left one egg out of there, that one egg. I'm, gonna, I'm interested to see if there's any veins and embryos. Sometimes they leave one out just because there's just too many eggs. And sometimes they just know that the egg is not going to be good. But, you know, I, I've pulled eggs. I've gotten eggs that were just laying there. This one looks pretty good aside from that little dimple. Maybe she didn't like the dimple, didn't look good to her. But there's some, there's some weird looking shaped ones there. But I see some really good ones as well. So we're going to pull her. We're going to put her in a new tub. And... Uh, Clean her up a little bit and then get those eggs out. All right, as you can see, she looks nice and empty there. Always check her, to make sure that all those eggs are out. She looks nice and flat here. She's actually got some, still got some really nice size. She had some good body weight though when I bred her. I got her, she's a good eater and the good eaters tend to recover really fast and that's why they're able to breed, you know, year after year. She's gonna get a little bath right now. She's, she's looking pretty good for a mama that just gave birth to a nice clutch of eggs. The funny thing is there's not even that many eggs there. It's just they're big eggs, you know. Yesterday's clutch, or two days ago, it was yesterday, I guess, were small eggs, but there was seven of them. She doesn't even have seven, but they're huge eggs. So I'm sure the babies will be big. All right, let's, let's wash her up. All right, so we got seven eggs. Ironically, I just mentioned the word seven before, the number seven. But one slug is in the garbage pail, which is definitely a slug. The one that she left out, this one, has almost zero veins going through it. I don't see any embryo. And this one uh, had no really veins in ours. So I, I don't think that um, those two are going to be viable. But we got five good ones. And these are really big, plump eggs. So we're going to get some big babies, that's for sure. Um, they're much larger. So for a snake that big, I almost expected to see a bigger clutch, but you know, three of them weren't good, really. I'm gonna leave these two in here just because you never know, but um, you know, in my experience, those are probably gonna turn brown and you know, moldy, and I'll have to pull them out and throw them in the garbage. But that's the way it goes. You know, you just throw them in there anyway because they they actually look pretty good. But they got the little the little nippling there. But sometimes I've had eggs that had nippling, and then then they got good babies from it. So. But I don't see the veins in, in the embryo in there, so I'll have to assume that probably only five of these eggs are going to really go full term. But those odds are still pretty good of getting, you know, uh, you know, usually what you get, obviously, if you're going to breed a Mardi Gras, you know, that's head albino to a yellow belly albino, you're going to get 50% albinos, obviously. You're going to get ivories, okay? And you're going to get Mardi Gras, and then you could get just yellow belly or asphalts. Because if the yellow belly albino female doesn't throw a yellow belly gene, then you, you don't get that Mardi Gras or ivory combination, with the ivory being the super yellow belly. So, hopefully, we'll get some good stuff. I love Mardi Gras, love albino Mardi Gras, and uh, good litter. Nice way to end the night. I showed this boy the other day, but since we have the albino Mardi Gras clutch, we gotta show him. When he was born, spectacular. As you know, these guys, uh, they fade these bull pythons a little bit as they get older, but he's still really, really, really cool. But here's my albino Mardi Gras. 
when he was born, he was spectacular. He's still pretty spectacular. That's a, that's a really nice looking albino right there for sure. And just uh, a lot of, you know, pattern diversity. You can see the striping here where you got your, that's your freeway, okay, or Mardi Gras, obviously. Whenever you have Enchi and Albino, it really darkens the snake up a little bit. I, I'd be interested to see if I didn't hit the Mardi Gras, if I would have just gotten the Albino Freeway, which is possible that I can get with this, this, this new litter. I think there would actually be more white in here and it would look even cooler. So it'll be interesting to see what I hit on this time. So this, this male should be up and breeding this uh, coming season. So I'm pretty excited about that. I don't even know who I'm gonna put him to yet, but I got some ideas. I wanted to give you guys just a little look at the dad. This is the uh, the Mardi Gras Het albino male that I produced two years ago myself. Actually, in 17, three years. Wow, time's flying. Two and a half years ago. And he did a great job breeding this past season for me. So I'm really happy about that. He'll, he obviously just bred that female we just showed you. So two years in a row, we got some cool, viable eggs. Good job, buddy. You're a daddy again. All right, I was going to hold off on this, but I'm, I guess I got to show you guys my caramel doublehead snow, which is albino azanthic, was bred to my female doublehead snow, albino azanthic, and everything is, I showed some pipping pictures on my Instagram, but everything's coming out now. Now, there's a lot of eggs here. I thought there weren't as many. There's like a million snakes there, and they're still coming out. There's a little azanthic right there. I believe that's an azanthic. Yep, Silver Eyes is an azanthic that's gonna be 66% het albino. I got a bunch of double het, 66% het snows here. A lot of azanthics in this litter. Now, when I first thought of Storm pipping out, I didn't see any albinos, I lost my mind. I, I was like, thought that maybe my male really wasn't double het, but I'm gonna show you the next egg. But I had to take, there were so many snakes that had pipped out of these eggs and come out of them. I had, to, I had to put them in another box. <laughs> I think I have a 100% hatch rate here. This is unbelievable. And these babies are actually pretty big. Last year's the carpets and the year before that, they were not as big. So I don't know if the dad, it was a different dad. So I don't know if like um, I got better odds this year. Obviously the goal was to try to produce the first moon glow, which would be an albino exanthic caramel. Um, and I don't even know what it would look like. So... I was pretty bummed when I only saw dark heads. But you know what? The albinos come out last. I don't know why. I always find that the darker ones, the normal ones come out first. I think they're just stronger. <laughs> they get out first. So I'm surprised I'm not getting bit more. I guess maybe because they just came out. They don't know what to do. But So this is the um, – I still have snakes coming out. There's still heads popping out. So I'm going to leave these guys alone. I'll show you the other box, which is a little more exciting. We're just a little azanthic, 66% head albino. What a nice-looking snake that is. I wonder if that's a – it's really light. I wonder if that's a caramel. That could be a caramel azanthic, 66% head albino, because they don't look this light normally when they come first come out. So I, I have to believe, you know, I, it's gonna be a little harder to decipher what all these are. That's why I'm gonna have to really wait. I don't usually sell, I haven't even sold, I just started selling my 2019 clutch. Actually, my 2018 clutch was, I finally sold everything I wanted to sell. And I really had just put it on the market this year, but. Really nice looking little baby there. Um, you can see this is an albino here. The albinos don't look white and yellow when they're first born because once again, carpet pythons go through that ontogenetic color change at a year old and they get lighter. So that's an albino. And as you can see through this sea of darkness here, hopefully we don't lose any snakes. <laughs> we have what appears to be some moon glows. Possibly a, one's a snow, one's a moon glow. One is definitely, that one white one on top there is, is zero pattern. I, I, you know, look, you don't know until they, once again, they shut out a couple times and they start going through their color change. But I would, I would bet that this guy is probably a moon glow. The other guy might be a snow. I didn't sex him, so I don't, I'm just saying guy, but I don't really know what, what sex they are. It appears, it appears that I have either a snow and a moon glow, or two moon glows, or two snows in this litter, which is great odds. I'm very, very happy. 
I don't believe, I don't know, but I don't believe that anyone outside of Australia has produced a moon glow carpet. That has been my goal since day one of keeping carpet pythons. White snakes. I know a lot of guys are going for darkness and all kinds of pattern. I want white, I want to be able to sell moon glow carpet pythons for a very reasonable price down the road, however many years that is. I have another albino in there too. Let me see if we could find that one. I think I have four in here. I didn't get a whole lot of albinos. You know, I think the odds should have said I should have gotten a couple more, but maybe not, because I only had like 20-something babies, but... So, there's a lot of snakes here. This is a lot of mouths to feed. I'm really nervous. It could be a real pain in the neck, but you know what? I'm so happy that I got these possible moon glows here. I can't tell you. I'm elated. It's, uh, it's a dream. You know, some, when, you, when you put your... your eyes on a specific project and achieving something and then you actually do it, you know, it's, it's incredible. I didn't know how it was going to happen. I had my double head snow, double head snow. I produced a snow male two years ago. He's going to go into the breeding program this coming season. And I didn't know how I was going to get that moon glow. And then I picked up a, a pair of caramel head, double head snows and the male got up to size and I bred him to the female, took a chance. And, you know, I could have gone with the snow and gotten more snows, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna take a chance, because I don't know what the caramel is gonna do with the, uh, if it hits, if I hit the caramel snow. And it, it, I think I did it. I think this is the moon glow, I really do. You know, a couple of the Australian guys had commented on my Instagram picture, and they were like, congratulations. So I have to assume that maybe, you know, that was a little validation from them. But once again, you don't know, these, these snakes, they change colors so much over the next year. They could get the pattern, they could get yellow in them. So I don't know. But it is exciting. So I hope you guys are enjoying my enthusiasm. All right, guys. That's it for tonight. Oh, my God. I know you guys are excited. Just to, Maybe not as excited. Whoa, the peacocks outside are excited. I hope an alligator doesn't come up and try to grab me. But I know you guys have got to be excited because I'm super excited. Possibly a moon glow carpet python. That is my holy grail. I've been seeking that since day one when I bought my first carpet python back in 2014. I said, I want to make a moon glow. Didn't know how I was going to do it. No one had made one in the world at that point. Obviously, the last couple of years, they've made them in Australia. Uh, they got a little bit of a head start on us. That's where the carpet pythons are from. I don't think anyone has made one here in the United States. I could be wrong. So if, if someone has, I, I don't want to insult them. But uh, I made a snow two years ago. I didn't know how I'd get to that moon glow. I thought it was gonna take me another six years. I just happened to get lucky and I got that caramel double head snow male and I, I bred him to that female double head snow and we got, I mean, we hit the odds. Luckily it was a big clutch of eggs, over 25 eggs. And so we had a much better chance odds wise of producing that. And it looks like we hit a moon glow, at least one moon glow. I mean, I think we did. Unless it's just the snow and that, I, you know, I can't tell because it's, you know, it, it, it hasn't gone through its color change yet. And it was born yesterday, you know, so we won't know, obviously. Uh, another obviously exciting clutch today was the laying of the albino Mardi Gras. Hopefully some more albino Mardi Gras. Can't have too many of those. Those are really cool. That's, a, that's another project that took almost five or six years for me to kind of come to fruition. Uh, I've been working hard on that. I produced the first one, that, uh, my first one, at least last year. Uh, hopefully this year we'll get a couple more. I know a lot of people have asked me about wanting to purchase one. I kept the mail back. I only produced one last year uh, for 19. I kept that mail back. So hopefully if I produce another male, you know, or even a female, I might let them go this year. So you guys can uh, enjoy that as well. Love the Mardi Gras. Love the albino Mardi Gras. I don't know where I want to go with it next, but there's, there's so much potential with that project. So... Hey guys, that's what it's all about. We have sometimes we have ups and sometimes we have downs. Today was a good up day, and uh, I'm gonna head back. It's two in the morning as usual. I'm gonna go take a shower and, and, and get a, hopefully a good night's sleep, and uh, come back tomorrow. You never know what I'm gonna find. So, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit the like button. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.